the first time is unforgettable. My name is Johnny Marriott, and this episode, I'm exposing you to the adventure of a lifetime as we go in search of one of the world's rarest bears, the spirit bear. On the wild northwest coast of British Columbia, Canada, there is a tangled mass of glaciated fjords, towering snow-capped peaks, and remote wilderness islands called the Great Bear Rainforest. This lush rainforest area covers 74,000 square kilometers, starting from the Alaska-British Columbia border and continuing 400 kilometers south along the BC coast. The lifeblood of the area is the wild salmon that invade the rivers and creeks of the Great Bear Rainforest each fall to spawn. The salmon are integral to the survival of an incredible array of wildlife that call the rainforest ecosystem home, ranging from grizzly bears, black bears, and coastal wolves on the land, to seals, sea lions, and killer whales in the sea. The Great Bear Rainforest is also home to one of the rarest creatures on Earth, a white black bear known scientifically as the Kermode bear, but known to the local Gitgat First Nations as Mokskmal, and to others as the white bear, ghost bear, and most commonly, the spirit bear. This stunning white variant of the black bear is found almost exclusively in the Great Bear Rainforest on a number of densely forested remote islands in the northern half of the region. It's white because of a unique recessive gene, similar to the redhead gene in humans, that makes approximately one in 10 bears on these isolated islands completely white instead of black. I first heard about spirit bears 20 years ago when I read Charlie Russell's incredible eye-opening book about his remarkable experiences with white bears in the early 1990s. But it wasn't until about 15 years later that I was finally able to organize a trip to the Great Bear Rainforest in search of my first white bear. My wife and I endured torrential rains for a week, sitting along a creek, but we did get one glorious two-minute glimpse of a spirit bear about 200 meters upstream of us. To this day, that moment remains one of my favorite memories captured in a photograph. Then, in the final hour of daylight on our final day, the real magic happened. Someone spotted a tiny white speck in the distance on the beach as we were headed back to our float plane, and just like that, we had ourselves another spirit bear. The conditions were terrible. We were lurching up and down in meter high waves, but I'll never forget as that beautiful little female bear with the raccoon-like eyes walked along the rocky shoreline and climbed high into wild crab apple trees. And though it seemed like it was over in minutes, I somehow managed to fire off 900 shots of her before it got too dark. From that point onwards, I've been hooked. I've been back almost every year since leading a photo tour to the Great Bear Rainforest. And three years ago, we lucked out again and found the same little white female. This time, we got to spend two sessions photographing her along the coast again as she ate barnacles and looked for crab apple trees. Now I'm always hopeful that I'll get to run into this little female again, but I never imagined what our latest trip had in store for us. Our trip started off ominously with a harrowing flight into Hartley Bay from Prince Rupert on the float plane. But once we were on the water in the boat, things started going smoothly and we headed off towards Spirit Bear territory. Early on the second day, we arrived at the mouth of a gorgeous little creek absolutely teeming with salmon and immediately started hiking up along it. It literally felt like bear in the air and the nervous tension and excitement in our small group was palpable. We wound our way along the towering cedars and spruce and were just about to head down to the creek to set up after walking through a section of second growth forest when we ran into our first bear laying in the trees, sleeping peacefully. It was white and it was the female. I recognized her distinctive raccoon-like eyes almost instantly. We were awestruck. It was a glorious start to the trip, but the best was yet to come. Our guide Marvin pulled me aside and quietly whispered to me, she's got cubs here somewhere. 
I couldn't believe my ears. Cubs? Are you serious? Once she got up and wandered down to her favorite fishing hole in the creek, we followed suit and set up in the most gorgeous spot imaginable under a giant spruce. There was still no sign of the cubs, but Marvin kept assuring me that they were there somewhere. Sure enough, after about an hour, we finally spotted the two little black balls of fluff way up in a tree on the opposite side of the creek. Soon after that, the little female headed over to the base of the tree, called her cubs down, and started teaching them how to fish right in front of us. Interestingly enough, white mothers can have black or white cubs, depending on who they mate with. Similarly, black mothers can have white cubs if they're carriers of the gene and mate with a white male or with another black that is also a carrier of the gene. For the next three days, we witnessed the most incredible sights as the female let us into her world with her two little cubs. We watched them fishing and playing and eating, napping, fighting and nursing. It was easily my most memorable spirit bear trip, made all the more special by another encounter with the female that I had first seen six years earlier on my very first spirit bear trip. Earlier this year, a landmark agreement was reached between the BC government, First Nations, environmentalists, and forest companies to protect a huge portion of the Great Bear Rainforest. But the agreement is not all-encompassing protection. While it saves 85% of the Great Bear Rainforest from industrial logging, it does not save the Great Bears from trophy hunting. Which begs the question, how can one truly say the Great Bear Rainforest is protected if the black and grizzly bears are not? The agreement was also never meant to address marine protection, which it doesn't. That means that if our federal and provincial governments were to ever greenlight the Northern Gateway Oil Pipeline Project or other similar projects, the increase in oil tanker traffic would dramatically up the likelihood of an oil spill. The resulting irreparable damage to the streams and spawning grounds surrounding the Great Bear Rainforest could very well be devastating to wildlife like Canada's iconic spirit bears. If you loved watching the spear bears we showed you in this episode and enjoyed hearing the stories of my encounters with these magical bears, then I urge you to click the link at the end of this episode to take action to help me convince our leaders to continue on the right path and to have the courage to further protect this vital part of the world's natural heritage.